Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at Gangplank. We'll first start off with his abilities and what order you want to max them out in. We'll go over his runes and his masteries, followed by counters to look out for, and champions he does well against, along with team synergies. Finally, we'll talk about the items you'll want to purchase when you play Gangplank, and then we'll talk about his pros and his cons. Be sure to like and subscribe if you find this video helpful, but for now, let's take a look at Gangplank, the Saltwater Scourge. Go around the badger. As for his abilities, let's start off with his passive. This is a Trial by Fire. Every few seconds, Gangplank's melee strike will set his opponent on fire, dealing a true damage and giving him a movement speed increase. As for his Q ability, this is his parlay. We're gonna be putting a point into this at level one and maxing this out first. Gangplank will shoot his targets dealing physical damage and it will trigger on hit effects such as crit, hydra, sheen, and more. It will also plunder gold for each unit he kills. Plundered gold will change into silver serpents that can be used to upgrade his ultimate. We'll talk about that in a second. As for his W ability, we'll put a point into this at level 3 and max this out last. This is his Remove Scurvy. Gangplank eats oranges and everything's K. It cures crowd control effects and restores health. As for his E ability, this is his Powder Keg. We're going to be maxing this out second. Gangplank uncovers a Powder Keg at a target location. If he attacks it, it explodes, spreading the attack damage in an area around it and slowing them. And as for his ultimate, this is his cannon barrage. Gangplank signals his ship to bombard an area, slowing and damaging enemies. As for its upgrades, there's Death's Daughter, Raise Morale, and Fire at Will. I recommend putting your first serpents into Death's Daughter, and then Fire at Will, and finally Raise Morale. As for his rune page, I recommend taking crit chance marks, health per level seals, cooldown reduction per level glyphs, and crit chance quintessences. For his masteries page, you'll want 21 in the offense and 9 in the defense. Here's the page I like to take. As for champions that counter Gangplank, let's start out with Pantheon. Pantheon's passive can provide a lot of durability against Gangplank since it will block your parlay. This means he can tend to outtrade you with his spears in the early game, gaining an advantage. Next is Fiora. On similar principles, Fiora can block your parlay with her repose. She can also trade large amounts of damage early, forcing most Gangplanks to play a lot more passive through the rest of the laning phase. Finally, there's Riven. When isn't Riven annoying? Riven can easily negate your Q with her shield and has high mobility, which is a killer against Gangplank. Sit back and farm as much as you can and get gank support because you're probably gonna die. As for matchups that favor Gangplank, let's start off with Gnosis. I know some people will disagree with me on this, but Gnosis just wants to farm, so does GP. But GP will make more gold from farming and will have better combat stats from it earlier. Also, your harass is much better and you can negate his slow with Remove Scurvy. GP wins this. Teemo is next. He dies to very little amounts of damage and he's usually hard to get to because of this, but luckily for you, you can harass him with your Q and easily keep him at your distance. Also, one lucky crit at low life can easily kill him. Finally is Malzahar. You normally won't be landing against him, but if you happen to be rocking some GP mid, you can eat oranges and BK from his ultimates. Also, I believe in you and you can win the game. Does that help? As for champions that synergize well with Gangplank, those include Nunu, Amumu, Sivir, Hecarim, and for the love of god, I can't believe I'm saying Galio. Nunu, Amumu, and Galio all have synergizing ults that can stack up and help deal damage in fights. Sivir and Hecarim, with an empowered and sped up GP ult, can crush on engagements with teamfights. As for the items I like to take when I play as Gangplank at level 1, I like to start off with the Crystalline Flask and Health Pots. I just want to farm throughout the early game with my Parlay, and we just want gold, silver serpents, and we just want to get big. We want to afford big items fast, so this is what we want to start out with. Our first trip back to base, I usually will be picking up an Avarice Blade to get even more gold regeneration, and we're going to be using this item anyways when we pick up a Static Shiv. But before we pick up the Static Shiv, while we have the Avarice Blade, we might get the first part of our boots, but we're gonna want to rush an Infinity Edge. The damage dealt from the Infinity Edge on our barrels and just on our Qs is a lot and can definitely start to swing the advantage immediately in your favor. 
After we finish off the Infinity Edge, we make sure we do finish off our boots into cooldown boots of Lucidity. Very helpful. Gangplank's new kit honestly does great with a little bit of cooldown reduction, and that's why we take a little bit in our runes too. Without it, everything just feels like it takes too long, to be honest. You really want these. Also, you will then be picking up the Static Shiv because we want the crit chance, the movement speed, and just the damage that it really gives us. It synergizes really well with that Infinity Edge. The next item that I like to build actually will be a Bloodthirster. We pick up the Vampiric Scepter, which gives us the lifesteal that we need, and another BF Sword combined will make us the Bloodthirster. A good item for a lot of damage and a lot of lifesteal. After that, we then pick up the Trinity Force. I know a lot of people try to rush it, but it's too expensive for what it actually gives Gangplank early. It's not bad, it's not great, just don't do it. Go for the Infinity Edge. Trust me, I've been trying a million things. This always works best. Get the Sheen first and then finish off the item into the Trinity Force to maximize your awesomeness. And then as for a last remaining item in the game, you have a few choices. But most of the time, I find myself building a Warmog's armor. The added health will be very helpful with our oranges, which restores 15% of missing health. The more health we have, the more health we get back. Also, makes you harder to kill, which is always a good thing. Now, if you wanted to change the build up and go completely crazy and go tanky after the first three items, I'd actually then just drop the Bloodthirster and get the Triforce with the other two items in your boots and then build some more defensive stats. Probably a Spirit Visage and a Randuin's Omen would be my choices. As for his pros and cons, let's start out with those pros. He's super diverse build options. You can go crit, you can go tank, you can just kind of do whatever the heck you want with him. Then he also has God Mode Split Pushing. The new GP out split pushes anybody, I kid you not. And then he has a built-in heal and Quicksilver Sash. Super important things. A global ultimate means he can make an impact whenever he is split pushing. And you are a pirate, for the love of God. He's a pirate, that's awesome. And for those cons, he has an expensive build path for damage. Using Remove Scurvy at the wrong time will get you killed. Weak to Gap Closers, he does not like that. Um, super dependent on items for meaningful trades, which is why we try to get that Infinity Edge early. And a full damage build means you are squishy, so be careful, be careful. But get the War Mox, it does help. And as for my personal thoughts on Gangplank, I'll be honest, I did even tweet that I was not a fan of New GP at first, but it's because of the way he scales through the game now. It's, it doesn't really feel that much different than old GP but it's just the scaling thing, you gotta get used to it. So he does a lot of damage and once you start to get good with his barrels, those things crush in team fights. Setting them up appropriately and not letting them defuse them takes a little bit of time, be patient. But once you start to get all that worked out, you will start to crush in team fights. It is so fun and Gangplank remains super fun still because not a lot of top laners can build the damage he typically does and just walk into a fight, not care, eat oranges and just kill people. It's super fun. I find him very fun to play. I'm gonna keep playing him. Hopefully they don't nerf him. I actually hope they buff the cooldown crap on his barrels early because that seems to be the most frustrating part of his kit. But besides that, Gangplank is um, super fun. Farm up for sure. Make sure you shoot the barrels to kill minions for more serpents. You'll enjoy it. The game will go fine. You'll win. Trust me. I believe in you. But that is a build for Gangplank. I hope you all have good luck with it on the Fields of Justice, and I'll see all of you in the next build video.